What's up everyone, Fino here. Uh, sorry I'm a bit late with this one. Got caught up in the uh, start of season crunch for the anime channel, but I figured I'd take the chance to dig a bit deeper on Shiki, and I got some oddities I think you'll enjoy. So first the fundamentals. Uh, Shiki is a quick arts hybrid assassin who crits pretty hard, but her unboosted cards hit like a wet noodle, even against riders. So it's a playstyle that encourages you to maintain crit chains or uh, spam your NP. Speaking of which, she's got a big single target noble phantasm with an instant death mechanic. Uh, those numbers might look seductive, but instant death is highly constrained by its formula, and it won't work on most enemies of significance, even with buffs. Buffs like Shiki's most important skill, Mystic Eyes of Death Reception. It's a huge arts buff with uh, invulnerability pierce and it reduces death resistance, and with a 5 turn cooldown at rank 10 you definitely want to skill this one up. The arts buff alone is worth it. Essentially you prep your target with Mystic Eyes and you nuke them with your NP. Even without instant death this will seriously fuck up relevant enemies. It's a strong, simple combo. I'll deal with the other two skills as they come up, but for a change of pace I've made some sample team comps. First I've got this little gem. It's a crit setup and you've got options, but the one I found the most interesting was the Shinjuku Avenger. Guess I'll avoid his true name since that's kind of a big thing in Epic of Remnant. He and Shiki have almost perfect synergy. They're quick arts hybrids, they have instant death debuffs, and they crit for days. Old Doggo can soak up crit stars and go on a tear. It's pretty solid, and these two work really well with crit buffers like Hans and Waver. Stick a 2030 on them and you've got a safety net to boot. Speaking of craft essences, Shiki loves another ending. It gives arts and crit damage, it's a no-brainer. But for something outside of the gacha, Guda O is another strong option. It's from the Nobunaga event and you'll get another shot if you miss the first round. Oh, and Golden Sumo always works. Always. So yeah, one true pair? Shiki and Clifford the big blue fucker. Think about that. Actually don't, that just ruined my day a bit. Moving on, my second experiment was an arts team. So you've got Shiki, Casco, and either Assassin Amia or 100 Faced Asan. Those last two are coming in the Fade Zero event, which is after Jolters. Casco has a targeted arts buff. Stick it on Shiki and she'll just rip enemies apart. Her NP is also a great complement. You have a heal to offset health loss, cooldown reduction lets you miss the guys more often, and it has NP charge which gives your party consistency. Carrie and Asako have uh, solid arts buffs, and 100 Face gets an MP upgrade that reduces enemy arts resistance. Against beefy riders, this can set up huge damage turns for Shiki. Emiya is a bit less direct in his uh, support, but he's a better star generator. He also has this nasty skill that can force taunt an ally. Now why would you do this? Shiki's second skill is a one turn evasion. If you're about to eat a single target noble phantasm, you can actually just pop evasion and uh, taunt Shiki to fizzle it. As a bonus, Emiya has the advantage of his Bond CE, which is a party-wide hybrid buff, and uh, both halves benefit Shiki. And Tamamo's Bond Craft Essence is a party-wide arts buff, so you can combine those two for a strong total bonus. Oh, this. Uh, first of all, this is a meme. Don't do it. If you have to do it, the only place you'd see any real benefit is against enemies with a 20% death rate, which is uh, most gold border normals. It's not death resistance, but it is a part of the same formula. The point is that other enemies would either die from Shiki's normal combo, or statistically just won't die at all. To get an 80% success rate against gold regulars, you need to have 100% extra death chance from something that's not Shiki's NP. Her Bonsi gives you 30, Cursed Armasans gives another 20, and Sansan gives 10. So yeah, uh, not even close. Those are party-wide bonuses by the way, which are the only kind that would justify a team of uh, Shiki, Cursed Arm, and fucking Charles Henri Sansan. You also have the option of running her as a pinch hitter. If you know the encounter and you've got a K-scope or a limit broken imaginary element, you can move her in and out to assassinate priority targets. You would be using the plug suit and her third skill, which gives NP charge for 1000 health. K-scope only needs rank 1, but imaginary element needs rank 6 to get the 25% charge. Rider servants and dragons are obvious targets for her burst damage, but you can also use her instant death effect against some beefy normals. Sometimes you get trash mobs with 50k or more health, and these you can insta-gib. That said, there are a lot of things you can't. Servants and mid-boss enemies like the Spriggan, Bicorn, and Shadow Beast. These tend to have extremely low death rates, so you'll want to run specialized damage dealers when you fight them. Also, gold enemies in general and Lamias in particular tend to be more resilient. You can insta-kill them, but it's a big gamble. All in all, Shiki requires some planning to use effectively, but she's got applications even in late game content. She's a great tool to have, especially for farming during events. You can remove beef from an encounter, and there's always a use for that. Just know which enemies are vulnerable and which ones to avoid. And of course, she's a viable arts carry. But yeah, that's all I got.
You know, if you found it useful, by all means like, sub, show your friends, and tell them they're doing it wrong. Because some guy on YouTube said so. I also did a preview on Last Encore where I've got nothing but kind words for that pompous waste of time. All that said, I'll be seeing you real soon.